is a super finish from Dan James. And there are men in the box, and it comes for Pablo Hernandez, and Pablo Hernandez scores a goal for Leeds United. Oh! Goal and goal and goal! Hernandez! Hello and welcome to Match Day Live with me, Ben Shires, and wherever you're watching in the world, we'd love to hear from you tonight. So please get in touch on WhatsApp, email, or on social media. We'd love to get your pre-match pictures, your comments, and your questions. And don't forget, if you want to watch the match tonight, you can do so with a match pass. Just scan the QR code on the screen or head to the LUTV website. Now, Leeds head to South Wales, looking to make it seven consecutive league wins in 2024. Whilst Swansea have had a bit of a tougher time of late, but they did pick up a precious win on the road at Hull at the weekend. And joining me in the studio is someone who's used to going to Hull and back. It's Michael Bridges. <laughs> Great to be here. Thank you for the memories. Good to see you, mate. And normally you're so well turned out. I've worn my Sunday best for you and you've come looking like a Leeds United model. Ben, I always see you. You're always immaculately dressed. And I thought, you know what it is? I'm going past the club shop. I'm going to go and get myself a little bit of merch and just bring the bring it down to a more casual level. It's a stitch up. I'm in the same curry sauce colour <laughs> that we had with our chips earlier. Um, Don't tell me why, <laughs> <laughs> it's our secret. Luckily, we're not live. Oh, we are. Uh, now, we've mentioned uh, Swansea, Michael, Leeds heading down to the Liberty Stadium today. And for many teams, it's it's a bit of a, a tough ground to go to and, and hope to come away with three points. But surely Leeds don't fear many opponents at the moment. Well, they shouldn't. You know, the boys should be going down there full of confidence because of the performances and the results that we have got, you know, especially going into the 2024 have been magnificent and Swansea uh, have been on such a bad run of form you know they've only got one win the last five matches conceding 12 goals in five games however got the new manager Luke Williams and uh, his first game in charge what did they do they went and won it I think it, it kind of said something out with the rest of the league it was a way to Hull everybody's expecting Hull to get the result Swansea got the result so they you know they're coming at this with a bit of confidence off the back of their manager he's definitely made an impact there but again, with the firepower that we have got, the defensive um, quality that we have shown this season as well, the amount of goals that we don't concede, I think there's only less of concede less than us. So that shows where we are at this season. We should be going there full of confidence and just seeing the boys go in there. You can see a nice relaxed atmosphere and getting focused, ready to go. And you'd probably say that most teams watching that line at walk into the tunnel in, in the championship at least oh. would, would want to cherry pick yeah. maybe nine or ten of those players for their team. I mean, that's the level that Leeds are playing at at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And I think we're spoiled for choices at the moment. And it's a good spoiled for choices to have. The manager has got a selection dilemma every week now. Uh, what do we do? Do I change anything? Do I keep a winning formula? We've got players that are ready to pounce and take the opportunity when they're needed. Willie Nunt was being one of them. Dan James has been the one on the outer, coming back on the bench tonight. But again, that just shows the quality because Dan James' stats are through the roof. You've got to take a back seat and um, it's really healthy, what, what I call it, it's healthy competition inside a group of players. Yeah, absolutely fantastic that for the first time in what feels like quite a long time, if yeah. you're a Leeds fan, there's been that strength in depth uh, in the whole squad which gives the manager options, particularly when injuries happen or they just need to rotate a little bit. And we've seen that happen increasingly. And, and with the likes of Patrick Bamford now leading the line, yeah. is it any coincidence that since that began at the start of this year, Leeds have looked perhaps a bit more cohesive going forward and the, the defence has gotten tighter as a result of that high press? I'm delighted for Patty. Uh, playing the same position as, as Patty as a striker, that I know the dynamics that he can bring and he had injuries he missed the penalty early on the season his confidence was down he's a confidence player 
And what I, what I love about Patty is the the fact that he's he's been managed to get his opportunity. He's taken it. He's finding the back of the net. He's playing with a smile on his face once again. He's talked about he's got the love of the game back recently in, in an interview. But it, he always puts the side before himself. That's our mantra: side before self. The time when, with the penalty mm -hmm. when he went and held the ball, and you think, "No, oh, Patty's going to step up and take it again." But no, what he was doing, he was taking the pressure off another player. So I think what Daniel Farquhar has done, he's given he, given Bamford the opportunity, and Patty has repaid him because he's, he can play with his back to goal as well. I think we really didn't have that kind of player that could hold the ball up, give us the relief when the players were running the other way because when it was Ruter and Joel Peru, great little partnership, mm. but and everybody was going forward. Every, nobody could play with their back to goal. So Patty's given us a new dimension and you know I think it's the final piece in the jigsaw for this back end of the season. Now look, we can't talk about uh, Leeds at Swansea without mentioning the last time that we yes. played there, one of the most momentous matches in recent memory. You're going to say Hernandez, aren't you? Oh, what a moment. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. on the intro there, wasn't it? Hernandez. Yeah. Yeah. Great moment. And that's when we were all watching at home. It was still lockdown viewing, of course. And it was that that cemented us on, on the route to winning the championship that season. I mean, what a brilliant memory and, and, and such great times for Leeds down there. Yeah, great times. And I'd have him back now. Yeah. <laughs> a player that can unlock doors. He, he was just a beautiful player to watch, you know. And in that moment, there, every time I see it, it puts a smile on my face. The memories come flooding back. And um, let's just hope we can, we can go down there and replicate something like that. Somebody can produce and get the three points back because it'll make it a hell of a nice journey back for the fans. Absolutely. Well, we talked about squad rotation, strength in depth. We've got the teams out now and it's exactly the same as against yeah. Rotherham. So Daniel Farker knows he's got a winning side on his hands and even though Dan James, now back from injury, could have started, he's kept with that same eleven, specifically Willie Nonto, because of the way that they're performing. Yeah, and like I said before, Ben, it, they're not going to play. This is where all the staff come in um, to it. You've got to know your players, you've got to know how they're feeling, you've got to know what they're, what they're up to. Any of them that are underdone will be taken out of the squad. So obviously everybody's fully fresh, they're still full of confidence after the last result. And Daniel Fort was in a position like, he, you know, he, do I change it or do I not? We've seen him change things in the past um, when there was a winning game and the team lost. And then the second time round, he changed things and the team won. So he stuck with the same 11. He's saying, go out again um, and perform. You have earned the right to do that. And like you say, the positive for us is Dan James is now back on the bench. So again, that's another massive impact player. Another player that Swans would be thinking, oh, We've you know, seen his name on the team Not sheet. Not him as well. Not him as well, exactly. So there's a lot of players that we have in our, at our club at this moment in time as well. The Welsh boys, some of them ex-Swansea players, they've got that extra little bee in their bonnet as well to, to make sure we go down there and put on a solid performance. Yeah, well, it's a long way down to Swansea, but our intrepid commentary team have made the trip. So let's catch up with Bryn Law and Tony Dorigo. Cheers, Ben. Well, we've had heavy rain throughout the day here in South West Wales. There's still rain swirling around inside the stadium now as well. But the pitch looks in really good, Nick, and we're looking forward to another important game for Leeds United. Team news first, as anticipated. Same starting eleven as the last match. That continuity is a good sign, isn't it, Tony? It is, because the boys are certainly breeding confidence in one another. The results are coming. Uh, they're playing well. And I like the mentality. Uh, I think that's getting stronger and stronger as certainly this year has progressed. Uh, wins all along in the last six games. Same again, go out there and do the job. They have to just keep doing that, don't they? Because the pace at the top is hot. Oh, it's relentless. I mean, you look at the point tally and go back to the seasons where we're in the championship uh, and getting promotion or getting to the playoffs. And we are way above that, yet we are still third in the table. So, yep, it, it is relentless. But all we can do is beat the next team in front of us, and that's Swansea tonight. It's another long trip for the players, ahead of another long trip to come again this weekend. Does that take a lot of managing? Uh, it does, to a point. Uh, I think with the players, uh, they're used to travelling. You know, that's what it is, but you don't want to be doing too much of it. So, uh, I know it sounds silly, but it can you know, tire you out mentally and physically. So, that's going to be managed properly. Uh, but the boys are experienced, a lot of internationals in the side. They travel you know, long distances to come back and play, but we have to be mindful of that great sense of familiarity for almost half the Leeds group in a yeah. sense here isn't it there's so many Swansea connections in the side yeah. what's it like going back to an old club in numbers like that significant numbers like Leeds are doing tonight uh, well they're fortunate there's a lot of them together uh, me going back to my old club I remember going back to Chelsea for the first time that was interesting yeah. um, but we got the right result and that's most important you know you, you try and forget about that it is difficult not to forget the, the, the fans will certainly remind you uh, but a lot of the lads I say there's a big group of us uh, of them that played for Swansea before uh, they'll be coming here confident and I'm sure they'd like to say well this is how good we are you know have a look at my new team and see how we're doing 
Yeah, Leeds have tipped the balance a little in terms of the away form. Not great yeah. going into the uh, change of the year. Since the change of the year, it's been really good. That's the aim of the exercise again this evening, isn't it's it? It's been excellent. You know, it really has. Only conceding one goal in those six as well, scoring 12 or 13, whatever it is. Looks like we can score, you know, at will. Uh, sounds silly as well, but our ratio of scoring goals could be better, mm. could be higher. We could be scoring 18, 19, 20. Uh, but it's built on those clean sheets, built on a solid defence. And these sort of nights is where that comes to the fore. Last time Leeds United were here, a certain Pablo Hernandez scored a famous last-minute goal. We'd probably settle for something similar this evening. Fantastic. And you, Brim, wouldn't be able to resist mentioning yeah, that. I mean, it's his famous commentary <laughs> as well at the end, isn't it? Absolutely great. Um, well, what they were saying there about uh, getting those wins on the road is, is true, isn't it? We've started to win away from home, yeah. but the home form has never been a problem. And, and that was the case on Saturday against Rotherham. It was a comfortable win that probably could have been even more comfortable. Uh, and like you say, the, the away leg or the away, the away match against um, Rotherham 1-1, one, one, it was the point of a Christmas where I think, where are we going here? Don't, don't let us stumble across the line and try... We've galvan galvanated since then and, and gone on a huge run. And Daniel Falk always talks about the home form. And again, at the weekend against Rotherham, it was just plain sailing. The, the dynamics were there. However, I've got to say about Patty's goal. I, I love this because he, he knows exactly what he's done. I mean, he there's celebrates no, with the elbow there, no doesn't he? There's no VAR. He <laughs> Does knows, he do anything else with he, the elbow? He knows it's not going to get taken off him. But again, it was just the build-up player and a guy that I've really, really admired since he's come back into the, the team is Firpo. Yeah. Uh, there was talk, was he going to be leaving? Was he going to get game time? Daniel Farker was a big fan of this. Now, that was another assist for him. And that just, it, it was just relentless from Leeds United. No, it was it was end-to-end end football from one end of the field to the other. We played through the lines and our counter-attack, you know, when, when Somerville gets on the ball and then you've got Rute who loves finding passes, the link of play between them two is, is incredible. And Creed's just gone to a new level with his finishing. We're seeing, we're seeing him score all kinds of goals. Mm. You know, we, we love his thunderbolts. We love his benders in the bottom corner, top corner. He's shown he can dissect defenders with his pace there, but he's still got the composure. There's still so much to do about this this goal, um, and he, he has gets a composure. So close to the keeper there as yeah. well as a striker. Yeah. I mean, you, you you can't leave it too long, can you? No, you can't. That's what I, that's what I admire. And he's getting better and better. The more games he plays, the more I see him. I'm thinking, you know, this kid can go to a whole new level. And thankfully, Leeds United, we, we have him at this moment in time in our promotion push. And the, the game was just, yeah, the, it could have been so much more. I mean, uh, obviously, you, uh, you say he can score all kinds of goals. And uh, this was a fantastic way to, uh, to get off the score sheet for him. But then the penalty that we're going to see now, I mean, not only does he win it, but the way, the, the coolness. I mean, we're seeing a a different player here at Leeds than one that we've maybe had at Leeds for a long time. Well, it was definitely a penalty, no doubt about it. Again, the build-up play this time, Nonto was involved. But look how many numbers are back defending for Rotherham and we found a way to get through them all, do you know what I mean? I watched Daniel Farker's interview after the game when he was speaking to Tony Drago about this penalty and would he have done it if it had been at the situation where it was nil-nil? I think he probably would have done, you know, because the confidence of Korea at this <laughs> yeah. moment in time. Daniel Farker probably doesn't want him to do it, but... He just caught everybody off guard. I mean, I'm thinking he's going to go and put it bottom corner where he normally does it with these little, in, <laughs> I see it inside of his foot, the bender in the bottom corner. But that is just a way to take the mick. And that's the confidence that we are playing with this moment in time. So a, a great result. There was never any doubt at home. Um, and the, the tough thing is now going back it up against Swansea away from home. And that is the challenge that obviously Daniel Farker will lay down to the players to say, can you go and match up? Because what you'll find from, um, from Swansea they, they're a possession-based team. All right. When I, when I look at the possession, they're, they're normally 57% on average this season. Which is huge, isn't it? It's that's huge. That's, big that's ranked stuff. third in the championship. However, everything else from there on in their stats are way down below 50 shots and corners and everything. They're down like 15th to 20th in the, in the rankings. So what it shows is they're going to keep the ball, but they don't do it in the right areas of the field. And they're not doing much with it Correct. when they do have yeah. the ball, which yeah. is, thankfully, the opposite to Leeds' yeah. approach at the moment. So our approach is we can keep the ball in the possession, in the, in the defensive third, the mid third, in the attacking third. We've got the transition moment because of the pace that we can go at. We've got the deliveries, the crosses, our stats. I mean, we're shots, on shots this season, 416, second in the division. First half goals, 29, first in the division ranked. It's, it's just the start that we are getting now at this moment in time. Te teams are fearful of us. 
Yeah, well, Daniel Farker has been speaking to the press uh, ahead of the Swansea game. Let's hear what he had to say about the Swans. Swansea, when you did analyse all the results at the weekend, you had a look. How surprised were you that they went and won at Hull? Not surprised because um, obviously their uh, form in terms of results in the games before was, uh, was not great. Um, but I liked what they were doing uh, on the uh, on the pitch. I liked their game, so it's a brave side, a, a good possession side. You can see clear principles and processes uh, in their in their game. And for me, it was just a question um, when they would win the game, and not not if. And I'm also not surprised that they are capable to win a really um, difficult difficult away game, uh, for example. So for me, it was uh, was not a surprise because I think it's a really good side with many experienced players on this level with many technical players so uh, I think they are definitely also still one of the best uh, and better uh, possession sides in this uh, in this league and um, it's a big task and a big ask uh, especially after after a win for them they will go into this next game with with confidence and and also their situation has eased up a little bit and right now against Leeds United, yeah, they have nothing to lose. They can play with a bit of freedom, so um, it will be a difficult task, and we have to be prepared. What do you make of Luke Williams and and what he's done in the game so far? Yes, it's always a bit uh, difficult um, to to um, judge and speak about um, a manager in charge of the uh, of the next rival. Um, so for that, I I try to be um, more a bit reluctant to to comment too much. Anyhow, but uh, what I what I can say, so I, I always like when I watch a team and I can see the handwriting of a uh, of a manager, and this is what I 100% see also at, uh, at Swansea. So I was too far away also to to judge about his work, what he's done, uh, what he's done before, us, and it's also perhaps not that important. Though the most important uh, topic is uh, is more or less um, his effect uh, on on uh, the here and now and. Uh, I like what he's doing, so I like how they how they play, how they set up their team, so how um, how their principles are, and I'm I'm quite respectful. So I think he's doing a really good really good job, and and I'm 100% sure uh, you will also see this in the results and also in the in the that their position on the table will improve a lot because for me they are one of the best and at least one of the better uh, possession sides in this uh, in this league and. Uh, Especially our work against the ball, our our pressing, our compactness has to be spot on in this game. Well, look, there's Daniel Farker mentioning Swansea's possession stats. I think he's been reading your notes. He's looking at my notes, on here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's talking about identity there for Swansea. It's something that we've seen sort of time and again. Uh, from Swansea teams, even as they've changed over the years, moved divisions, yeah. they've always wanted possession. They've always wanted to uh, keep the ball and try and do something with it. I mean, it's it's that part of the equation that this current Swansea team seems to be struggling with a bit. So the possession base is still there, like I talked about, but it's the getting the getting the final product, get how they're getting the final third, what are you doing to create chances. I mean, I, I could set a team up to keep nearly 90 odd percent possession in their own half if you're not going to affect the other team. So that's their challenge. That's a challenge that Luke Williams has got. So, you know, Daniel Farker says, I respect everything about them because that is the DNA of the football club. That's what they expect. The production line has been unbelievable over the years, but they've just been stumbling the last few years as to how this possession-based game, um, you can take it into a percentage game, which is in the, the fields. Are you doing it in the right areas? Now, at the moment, Daniel Farker has got us playing possession-based football, but we're doing it in all areas of the field, which is good, and we're creating chances. We're scoring goals. That's a challenge Luke Williams got now. So Daniel Falker knows he's got one upper hand going into this game, but the boys have still got to deliver. Well, you talk about the Swansea production line. We're yeah. benefiting from it here at yeah, Ellen Road. Great, We've it? got Dan James, who <laughs> yeah. came from there. Joe Rodon. Yeah. Obviously, Joel Peru uh, wasn't at their academy, I don't believe, but he, he was there scoring yeah. goals for them. Now he's here scoring goals for Leeds. Thankfully. So part of that sort of the signing, identity. By the way. Great yeah, signing. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but we, we've sort of transposed some of South yeah. Wales up to West Yorkshire. And the lads will be relishing going back, because I used to love going back. We heard Tony Drago talk there before about you know the Chelsea situation when he went back. I used to love going back and playing against my old teams, because he, he wanted to go back and perform. And you always found that there was... You'd either get booed off the fans, you'd get accepted off the fans, and um, yeah, it's always an interesting concept but you're well up for it so the, the, that stands us in good stead the boys will be relishing it well Dan James certainly relished yeah. it when uh, Swansea were up here in November for the home fixture uh, you probably remember he had that very early goal disallowed he thought he'd scored we're all up on our feet brilliant start and it's chalked off but 
I mean, it was from one end of the field to the other end of the field. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was marginally offside as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the, the, there's no VR. We can't go back and discuss it, as we saw with Patty's elbow goalie. That, <laughs> that <they were laughs> the we're calling it now. Yeah. So the, we were going mad here. Yeah. Two minutes into the game, a great start, but what happened the other end of the field? And then you're thinking, right, where do we go from here? Can we get back into the game? It was a, you know, the, a mix-up defensively and a superb finish. I mean, you can't take anything away from no. that. It was, no. uh, it was brilliantly taken. Um, a, a defensive lapse and it's that classic thing isn't it of you're always at your weakest when you've just scored and we hadn't even actually scored so yep. we were even weaker we were still dwelling on it I think and, and what it was it was you talk about the possession that um, Swansea have it was with the direct ball over the top that really caught us out and exposed us um, Pascal not doing what, what he should have done with the header he's thinking that Melly is a bit further out but then the reaction was absolutely brilliant from Leeds United we, I'm thinking how long is it going to take us to get back in the game because we hadn't started many games really really well um, and we found myself, but that ice cold and against your against former employers his, against his well. old club. What did, what did I say? I mean, there's no sentiment there from Joel Pirro, is he? He's off <laughs> celebrating away, <laughs> as he should. I think Ruter was a bit more, a bit more happy and animated. Yeah. But it was, a, it was a fantastic response, and I think that's what um, I've admired about the team under Daniel Fart as well. We've never ever, at any point in this season, have we felt sorry for ourselves or mm. feel you know like things are going against us even after the offside goal they went up and scored but coming back into this game <clears throat> that was the perfect response yeah and all this in the first four minutes by the way yeah. a disallowed goal Swansea score we score so it's 1-1 we've barely caught our breath and then the second the, the rest of the first half sort of well, trundled on well, we talked about possession from one end of the field to the other and this is what I was this is what I talked about with Leeds United we'll find a way to go you, you can play out all the way through but when, when you do that and you're getting <laughs> pressed the touch from Georgie there, and it was his first goal at Elland Road. Mm, yeah, he went off and he did the Harry Potter magic one thing. That was for Matt Lewis, who did the podcast with him, who was obviously never long bottom in yeah. the in the Harry Potter movies. So, you know, t t teams want to play out and you want to play through the lines, but when a team is going to have such a high line, you know, Ampadu there just picked out the pass, and the touch was absolutely sublime. I mean, it's funny, isn't it? Because we're so used to seeing Leeds play dominant yeah. possession football. Yeah. Often it, it's, it's quite sort of um, moving it side to side and working our way up uh, systematically. That's a long ball over the top. It is. Now, you, again, some managers won't allow the team to do that. It's always, oh, we've got to keep it neat and tidy. You know, the ticky tack of football, we must keep it on the deck. Danny Fart has given the team a license to go and play through the lines, play possession, play it side to side. But if the opportunity is there to go and, and go quick, no problem whatsoever. So Amadou was full of confidence and again, an, another lovely goal and another Welshman scoring. Absolutely, yeah, another former Swansea yeah. protégé. But the way that Dan James takes this as well, at pace, yeah. and just rattles but it. There was three, three lovely moments in that goal. There was the tackle from Sam Byron that won the ball back. Mm. Again, Ruter with one of his assists. He's, yeah, he's just he's gliding through. Gliding through. And then uh, still a lot to be done and Dan James smashing the ball home. So that was a, that's a magic result and that gives us confidence to go in and know what we're, what we're up against tonight. Absolutely. Well, we saw that magic uh, Ethan Empadu uh, long ball there. He's, uh, he's provided... It's like a quarterback in the Super Bowl. There well, you go. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, bang on point that. Um, well, you know, he, he's shown a bit of artistry on the pitch, but what about off it? Here he is at Art Club. I remember this one. This is Joe, innit? Dad. No, who was that? Pass? That's me. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> At least he got this a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not Willie. <laughs> yeah. That's not. Why'd he put him fat? <laughs> nah, he's got the longest body in the world. <laughs> That's Joe. And then Joe drew DJ in yeah. return. <laughs> goal. Like, he's some bad drawings, you know. Yeah. So who's scored a headed goal? Joel? Nah. Coops. No. Yeah. Byron. <laughs> now, who gave Sam Byron wrinkles? Oh, is this the drawing? No, yeah. mate, it's just got pen and paper for banter. Um, I think it's a case of don't give up the day job, isn't it? I can't believe, right? <laughs> Amps has just said there. He's torn everyone else to shreds. He's gone, oh, these are terrible <laughs> ones. And I'm thinking he's going to pull something out here and he's just going to be an artist. Yeah, it's going to be Bob Ross. And he's done, he's done the worst of the lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, I've heard of abstract art, but that was something well, else. Emma's asked me a few times when she's been sitting there about 
Who is who is he drawn? I, I've got no idea, mate. That is absolutely shocking. No, no, yeah. Um, stick to the football. Oh, I think, man. Um, Please, if you're out there, help us out. Send us in a message. Who is he just drawn? Yeah, but if you are watching LU TV right now, Ethan Ampadu, turn it off because you've got wow. a match to play very so- that shortly. Is horrible. Um, looking ahead, uh, we'll be switching over soon to our commentary team, Michael, but I do want to know, uh, in terms of your score predictions, where do you think this match is going to end up? We talk, uh, talked a lot about Leeds' form, yeah. Swansea's shortcomings, uh, it feels like we're edging towards a, a Leeds win. Do you, do you think that can be taken for granted or is it going to be a No, I can't take it for granted because Luke Williams, like I say, they came in, they got the result away to Hull, that's a big result for his first match. Um, you can't take anything for granted. Swansea are at home, they're a possession-based team, so it's... I, I like what Daniel Farker said before. If we get the pressing right at the right times and we don't allow, you know, the lines to be broken too easy and, and, and let Swansea dictate play, we counter attack. We win the ball back high. That that is if we get the press spot on. I'm not worried defensively because I feel that like we're so secure. It's how we press from the front, win the ball back, and we've got to be clinical tonight. And um, uh, it's it's going to be close. And I've I've been here and I've sat here confident before and said three nil, four nil. I'm going to say that we will win this game by one goal, whether it's 1-0, 2-1, 3-2, it's going to be close. Okay, thank you Michael Bridges. Well, let's get the thoughts now of Ilya Gruev. Ilya, another away game, another long trip. Can you keep the winning run going, do you hope, this evening? Yeah, of course. Um, We want to continue our winning streak. Um, So, yeah, I think it's going to be a tough game, but we know what we have to do and I hope that we will um, win this game here. The mood in the group at the moment must be very good, is that right? Of course, um, we have a great run at the moment with so many wins and in January no, um, we weren't unbeaten, so it's great, the atmosphere is great, the mood is very good and uh, I think you also feel that uh, from our team. You've got yourself into the team, it took you a little while to get there, do you think it's going okay for you in that position at the moment? Yeah, I think the most important thing is that the team wins and we are doing it um, and I want to help the team with my uh, with my game, yes. And so this evening, good start, is that key to success perhaps? Of course, it's a tough uh, away game here uh, in Swansea, so um, we know the fans will be there for Swansea, so we have to be prepared from the first minute. Another long trip for Leeds United, another distant destination in a midweek, but one thing you can absolutely guarantee, size of the travelling contingent. All the seats away to our left-hand side are filled with the noisy travelling Leeds United fans whose team has just walked up the tunnel to appear down below us as we sit in a position halfway line mid-main stand and look on as Leeds in the change strip, the uh, rhubarb and custard kit this evening go through the formalities for the Swansea City side who was able to adopt the traditional all-white uh, as is their usual kit here at home at the Liberty Stadium and it's the Swansea players who are taking up uh, residency in the half away to our right-hand side as we look down the halfway line and Leeds United will shortly head off to the half to our left behind which those Leeds United fans are positioned there is a change to the Leeds United side a late change to the Leeds United side Patrick Bamford was named in the starting 11 but hasn't made the uh, start of the game so Joel Pirou has come in to replace Patrick Bamford